Hey everybody, welcome to Mold3D. This is a tutorial on creating a Mold3D keychain in ZBrush. This uh, final model will actually be 3D printable, so I encourage you to go out there and throw it on your MakerBot or your Form 1 or whatever 3D printer you might have and print out a keychain that looks just like this. Uh, special thanks to Daniel De Leon for printing out one of these on his MakerBot Replicator 2. Alrighty, so the first thing we want to do is go into ZBrush and click on the simple brush box here and we're going to create a plain 3D and then we're going to draw this onto the canvas hit the T button. The next thing we're going to do is make this a poly mesh 3D which is in your toolbox so click that one and now we have a true uh, polygon that we're working with. Let's go to the geometry tab and hit divide and let's go to about 7 that's about 4 million polys. So yeah, 4 million. That's good enough for us. And the next step is we're going to actually create this model using a texture map. So go to texture map, drop down, and at the same time let's go ahead and open up the masking. And if you hold control shift and click masking, you can have both of them open at the same time. Let's uh, click on the texture map box here, and then it's going to bring up in this window, and go ahead and hit import and uh, go ahead and source the texture map that's included in the link below and uh, uh, it's called the logo keychain.psd so let's open that up that's applying that as a square texture map to our model go back to this masking box and click on mask by color and we're going to use the mask by intensity so we're going to mask that and you can't see it right now, but it's there. If we turn off the texture map, you can see that we've now masked our polygon. So that's pretty good. Alrighty, so now that we've masked our polygon, we need to convert this into actual geometry. So first we're going to have to invert this mask. So if you control click on the outside of the canvas, it now inverts it. So our model, the logo is now the thing that is masked off. And we're going to go to the subtool palette here and go down to extract and we're just going to leave it at default settings and go ahead and run that. Alright, once that's finished up go ahead and just hit the accept button and that's going to shoot out another piece of geometry for us. So, And then we can delete the masked version. Alright, okay. Now that we have this geometry let's clear our mask and uh, what we're going to do is instead of using this the way it is we're going to recreate this uh, side part. So, luckily for us, these are all polygrouped. We can isolate this one by Control Shift clicking on the top polygroup. So, Control Shift click on that one, and now we're isolated. And let's go ahead and delete hidden. So, go to the Geometry tab and go down to Modify Topology and delete hidden. So, all right, now we have this one by itself, and there's no other geometry attached to it. Now, after a few tests, I found that doing retopologize right away is pretty beneficial. So let's go to the geometry and go to Z Remesher. And I'm going to change this to about 18. And I'm going to also turn off Adapt and Adaptive Size, turn that all the way down. This is going to give us a perfectly uniform uh, topology across the whole model. And uh, let's run that. Okay. So now that we have a new remeshed model, let's check it, turn on polyframe, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty clean to me. So yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Okay. Uh, the next thing we want to do is actually give this model thickness. So uh, sometimes it's a little bit easier to see the model by turning on display properties and double sided. So you can see both sides. And uh, let's go to the transpose tool, the W key. By tapping, we get the normal of the polygon to work with. So, the next thing we do is go to Morph Target, and uh, we're going to store the Morph Target. If you already had one by chance, just to make sure you delete and store it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to shift and drag upwards, and then let go. And then what we're going to do is hit this Create Difference Mesh, and then you're going to see a new subtool pop up into your toolbox, and that's our that's our new one. So you can see now we have that new new model made. And if you go to a polyframe, we get that. 
Alright, so what we're going to do is try to clean up some of this edging. And the way we can do that pretty easily, we go to deformation and then do the polish by feature. So I'm going to undo that and just go a little bit. We're going to lose some of the tightness here, but uh, honestly, it's, it's, it's probably worth it. So as long as we stay pretty faithful to the logo. So depending on how far you slide this over, um, it'll distort the logo a little bit. So, you know, you don't need to go very far. And it does a pretty good job cleaning up those edges. So, And we're almost done and ready to print out our keychain. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, export this mesh out. And I'm going to run this through the decimation real fast. So first we're going to go to Decimation Master, Pre-Process Current, and uh, it's already so low res, but um, I just want to triangulate the mesh, so dec decimate current, and now we got a triangulated model. And uh, let's go to the 3D print exporter, and this is kind of the tricky part. So the best way to do this is if you work in the uh, standard system, first of all, you need to update your size ratio. So go ahead and do that. That's going to build a bounding box around your model. And the next thing we want to do is um, set the axis of the longest part of your model to your desired size. So the keychain that you saw in the beginning was a 3-inch uh, keychain. Uh, so if you wanted to do 3-inch, you just hit 3 and enter. And most 3D print softwares like to work in millimeter natively. And it's better to not let them do the conversion. So we're going to go ahead and hit millimeter. And then we're going to change it to export selected. Just in case you have other subtools in there. You don't want to export everything. And then export this STL. So I'm going to go ahead and save over this uh, Mold 3D keychain logo and hit yes. And let's see, let's bring it up in um, MakerWare. So I'm going to go ahead and add. And there it is. And we can move it. And looks like it's pretty good. And then just for sake of testing, let's bring this one up in uh, Formlabs as well. And looks good too. So you can place that right in the middle of the build platform. All right. You can see the layers, and everything looks pretty great. So finishing this tutorial up, let's take a look at some product shots. Thank you everybody for joining us for this tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to share and follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Lastly, we encourage you to 3D print out your own keychain and share those photos with us on our Facebook page. We'll see you next time.